So what is going on everyone? Fernando Silva here with another video and I've been going through the news and I've been looking at what Microsoft has been doing and they announced that they're going to be releasing Windows 365 on August 2nd. And if Microsoft can do what they're saying they can do with this new cloud PC service, then ladies and gentlemen, we might have a game changer on our hands. So we're going to talk about exactly what Windows 365 is. So let's dive right in and see what it's all about. So the first thing that I do want to go over with Windows 365 is this video that Microsoft released about Windows 365. It's only a minute long, so if you guys want to skip ahead, go for it, but we're going to react to this video because it looks pretty freaking crazy. So again, this is going to be Windows 365 and it's considered a cloud PC by Microsoft because basically it sounds exactly what it actually is. It is a PC that you're borrowing cloud power, so you're borrowing RAM, you're purchasing hard drive space, but it's all in the cloud, right? So as long as you have an internet connection, and a screen that works, then you're gonna be able to basically run Windows 10 or Windows 11, depending on what Microsoft gives us, on any device, right? That is what Microsoft is telling us, as you guys can see, four CPUs, 256 gigs of storage, eight gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of RAM. You can pretty much buy whatever power you need at any time you need it, and then also spec down whenever you don't need that stuff. So that is awesome. And I think, again, if Microsoft can pull it off the way they wanna pull it off, then I think it's gonna work perfectly. I think it's gonna be a big game changer, especially for People like myself, who is a iPad Pro user and wants to use our iPad Pro for everything, it's a pretty big deal. So now what I wanna talk about is exactly what Windows 365 is. And like I said earlier, it's basically a streaming service and you're streaming Windows 10 or Windows 11, depending on what Microsoft wants to give us. You're gonna be able to stream that down to whatever monitor, whatever screen that you have that also has internet connection. So again, it's just a cloud PC that you're using from Microsoft servers in their data centers. So I know a lot of people that watch my channel are actually big techies, but I still want to kind of explain what cloud PC means and what, you know, what it entails. So basically, for those people that don't know, a cloud PC or this form of computing is, let's say you have a 2010 computer, you're ready to upgrade it, it's kind of slow, the screen still works, you know, the internet connection still works, but you know, you're bogged down by the low RAM, the old processor, things like that, right? So you go and you start looking for PCs to go buy, to trade in your old one, get a good deal of the new one and things like that. And, you fit, and then you see like, hey, it's like $1,200, $1,500 for a brand new laptop. And then Windows 365 comes in, right? So this is a perfect situation for somebody that has an old laptop, somebody that has maybe an iPad Pro and they wanna run Windows on. And maybe you're at the library and a computer that, that's not yours, but still has an internet connection. You can still just sign into your cloud PC and then you'll have everything right in front of you. So again, instead of going out to buy that brand new PC, all you do is you sign up for Windows 365, you decide what specs you want. You know, you want eight gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of RAM, 32. Do you need 100, only 128 gigs of storage? Do you need a terabyte? You decide all those different specs, and then once you decide on your virtual computer, then all you have to do is sign in, and then your screen becomes populated with that virtual computer. So again, as long as you have a strong internet connection at home, that means your latency is gonna be slim to almost none, which means you can run basically a computer virtually, again, at your home, but your, the computer's actually on a Microsoft data center who knows where, right? But you're connected to Microsoft's data centers and you're using their cloud PC. So hopefully that helps explain exactly what cloud PC is and what it's used for and what the benefits are, right? Again, the main benefit is you might have an old iPad laying around, an old tablet. You might have, again, an old Windows laptop, even an old you know MacBook Air that hasn't been used since 2010. You can now just use Windows 365, get on the Wi-Fi, and you'll have a brand new Windows 10, Windows 11 computer, but using it on, I guess, old hardware, which doesn't even matter because you're not using the internals. The only thing you're using from that physical laptop that you're that's on your lap or anything are the keyboard and the screen. And I guess the Wi-Fi card because you need to be connected to the Wi-Fi. But those are the only three things you're using. The RAM doesn't matter, the hard drive doesn't matter, the, the processor that you have in there does not matter anymore, right? So again, just wanted to explain to you guys what cloud computing is and having a virtual computer versus a physical one. So now I kinda wanna talk about some of the benefits of having something like this, right? And again, I'm going with the caveat that this works perfectly, this works how Microsoft wants it to work. And we're gonna test it out August 2nd, right? August 2nd is when it comes out, we're gonna see how much it costs, we're gonna see what the latency is like, we're gonna see how it deals with a lot of people coming in at once and overloading those servers. Very curious to see how Microsoft takes this on August 2nd. But again, some of the benefits are that you can literally spec out any PC that you want, right? There's applications that require a lot of RAM power, a lot of hard drive space, a lot of processing power. So if you have an old computer, it's obviously not gonna run on there. So you can just spec out a computer to the max. Maybe you need 128 gigs of RAM to run a certain application. I don't know what needs that, but maybe that's what you need. And now you, you know your MacBook Air only has like four gigs of RAM from 2010. So you just log in and now you have a computer, a super power computer to run that application. 
And then again, let's say you only need to run that application for like a day or two, right? You spec up your computer for a day or two, and then when you're done, you bring down that spec sheet so then your monthly price isn't as high. So that's what I love about these virtual computers, right? They're dynamic. So whenever you need more power, it'll give you more, it'll charge you more, but it'll give you more. And then when you don't need it, it'll take it away. And then obviously your monthly bill on that registration or that membership is gonna go down. Another amazing thing is that yes, you need strong internet to make sure that you can connect to the servers, make sure you can connect to your cloud PC and things like that. But an awesome thing is that your internet speed is not gonna matter for the work that you're doing on that cloud PC because you'll be using internet from that data center. And what Microsoft is doing is they're giving you 10 gigabit internet connection, right? And I was looking at screenshots and looking at videos of people getting like 9,000 megabytes per second. That's nine gigabytes per second, which is much more than you, what you would get even at home with like the highest internet. I mean, I'm not gonna speak for everybody, but most people, I think the highest internet that they can get, at least in the US, is one gigabit connection, which is what I have. So being able to 10X that virtually is freaking amazing. So again, you're using their internet speeds that are plugged into their data center and you're hardwired in. So as long as your internet is strong enough to get you there, then after that, you're using their internet speeds. And then again, obviously we gotta talk about some of these downsides to expect. Obviously, if you don't have an internet connection, you have zero access to this. So you will, this, you're pretty much SOL at that point, right? If you have no internet and you need to get your, to your cloud PC, you will not be able to use your cloud PC because it's not on your physical device. It'll never be on your physical device. It's always gonna be in the cloud. Another big one, especially for the people that wanna use it on the iPad, which is what I'm gonna be doing, right? We don't know how it's gonna be with latency from a touch and like pencil standpoint, right? So yes, it's gonna be amazing. And I'm sure that even if you have great internet connections, latency is gonna be very low. It's gonna be work pretty rapidly. So if you're working on like Excel sheets or maybe a PowerPoint, things that don't need like super intense real-time updates, then you're gonna be fine, I think. But if the second we get a little bit of latency and you're dealing with touch input and like pencil input, we might see a little bit of lag and I, kind of, I wanna see how Microsoft handles that. Like that could be a downside that we just don't know how it's gonna be. And then another downside is we have no idea how much this is gonna cost. Like literally zero idea. Like right now I know that the base level Microsoft 365, which is their productivity suite, you can get it for $8 a month, right? That's the cheapest version, but it goes all the way up to like 60, $70 a month, depending on what package you want. So again, Windows 365, depending on what type of computer you spec out in the cloud, I bet you it could start as low as bet you, but like 20, 25 bucks, 30 bucks, but you can probably spec it out to an infinite number. Cause the only thing that's gonna increase the price is how much you put on the actual virtual computer. So again, if you need like 256 gigs of RAM, 10 terabytes, the fastest speeds in the world, then it's probably gonna cost you a pretty penny. So those are all the positives and the downsides that I found from everything that I've been reading, all the demos that I've seen from Windows 365. And I think it's got a lot of promise. Like I'm really, really excited to see how it works on iPadOS, how it works on a touch first interface to see how Windows 10 or Windows 11 handles it. And the one question that I did wanna answer is, especially if you are a Microsoft user, then you're aware of this, right? There is the Azure Virtual PC. So this is a solution that Microsoft has had for a little while now, but I would consider it much more of an enterprise like business solution as opposed to a consumer facing solution because the Azure Virtual PC you need a team of techs to manage it, right? From a security standpoint, from you know keeping it up and running standpoint, you need like an actual SME, like a subject matter expert to make sure that that's managed and run correctly. Versus with Windows 365, everything is managed for you, right? So it's a managed service, it's a SaaS service, which means all you have to do is plug and play, it's a turnkey solution, and it's much more consumer facing as opposed to enterprise facing, because you don't need somebody else running the back end, making sure that it's working, making sure that you're getting all the security updates that you need. Microsoft handles all of that for the consumer side on Windows 365. And then finally, the last thing that I do wanna bring up is the compatibility, right? So this is gonna be compatible with pretty much anything in my, in like from what I'm reading. Obviously, if you have a Windows computer, that's gonna work. They're gonna have a dedicated Mac OS app, a dedicated iOS app, which I'm hoping also means we're gonna get it on the iPad because I'll be able to run an iOS app on iPadOS. And I also think it'll work with some Linux computers and things like that, but don't quote me on that. So I know for a fact we're gonna get an iOS app, an Android app, a Mac OS app, and then a Windows app. And then after that, we'll see what Microsoft does. But again, I just kinda wanted to walk you guys through exactly what Windows 365 is gonna be. I believe it's gonna be an awesome game changer. Like I said, I'm gonna have a video the moment it comes out after I played with it for a couple hours, maybe a day or so, to kinda give you guys my thoughts, my impressions on the iPad side. That's what I'm gonna focus on. I'm not gonna focus on running it on the Mac. I'm not gonna focus in on running on the iPhone because I'm not gonna do that. I wanna focus on seeing what the experience is gonna be like on an iPad Pro. Because again, most of my most viewed videos are people trying to use the Microsoft suite professionally on their iPad Pro because they just love their device, right? They love this iPad Pro. They love how slim it is. They love how portable it is how versatile it is, and they wanna be able to get all of their actual work done on it. So if Microsoft can do that, and Windows 365 can be that solution, I don't know, the iPad Pro could be the way to go from now on. But that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you guys learned something. I'm very excited for Windows 365, and hopefully Microsoft, you know, they give us 
exactly what we expect and it's not a train wreck which is something that i think could happen but i guess we'll find out on august 2nd everybody but that's gonna do for this video don't forget to like comment subscribe don't forget to check out channel sponsor paper life for always keep us protected especially if windows 365 and the pencil input and the latency is good i'm gonna be doing a lot of work with the apple pencil on the screen but again don't forget to like comment subscribe until next time peace